And to someone else who hasn't had many quiet moments in the past few weeks, joining us live now is the Shadow Treasurer and Labor Member for Rankin, Jim Chalmers. Jim, good to see you. Thank you for your time. How are the nerves? Oh, it's, a, it's going to be a pretty nervous wait, I think. We've only got about another hour and a half here uh, with booths open in south-east Queensland uh, and then probably a, a relatively nervous wait. But it's been you know, a strange day here on the booths. It's been absolutely bucketing all day. That's introduced an element of unpredictability to it all. Uh, but people have made it pretty clear uh, that they understand the choice at this election, a better future under Labor or three more years of the same under Scott Morrison. As Scott Morrison said he wanted it to be an election about the economy and to some extent it has been. It's been a cost of living election. People are sick of their real wages going backwards as a deliberate design feature of the government's economic policy. So uh, we'll see how we go. It remains to be seen when the, uh, the votes are tallied up, but certainly people have been receptive to our message. You've been around politics for a long time now, Jim. First as a staffer, now Shadow Treasurer. Do you think the swing is on realistically? What's your expectation about your home state of Queensland in terms of seats that could change hands? Because the LNP seems to be on pretty strong ground up there. I certainly think there's a mood for change. There's an appetite for change. I think people are tired of the style of leadership that they've had in this country the best, for the best part of a decade, but particularly the last four years under Scott Morrison. So there is a mood for change. But incumbency is still a really valuable commodity in politics. You know, if you think about the context of the last uh, two or three years in particular, uh, it's not a small thing for a country to change its government. It's been historically difficult for us here in Queensland, as you know. Uh, we know that we have to work twice as hard for every vote, and that's what we'll be doing all the way up to the close of polls tonight. Jim, I'm keen for your take on some developing news this afternoon. The Liberal Party has been sending out messages to some voters pointing to an asylum seeker vessel that's arrived off the WA coast today. It's essentially a warning that Labor can't be trusted on border protection. Can you promise voters at this late stage that that wouldn't become a more regular occurrence under a Labor government? Oh, well, we support Operation Sovereign Borders and we take this opportunity uh, to pay tribute to the Joint Agency Task Force. Uh, who manage these arrangements. There is an element of bipartisanship when it comes to uh, the major elements of Operation Sovereign Borders. Uh, I don't think anybody would be particularly surprised to see uh, the Liberals trying to play politics with this, but I think people know uh, that the major planks of this policy are the same, Labor or Liberal. They know uh, that if you make that journey, you'll be turned back or sent to Nauru. Uh, and beyond that, you know, I think that the government's engaged in this kind of last minute desperate act. This election is not principally about that. This election has been principally about cost of living and real wages going backwards. Uh, under this government, it's been about Scott Morrison uh, going missing when we need him most and never taking responsibility. Those are the major issues at stake in the election. And in terms of the economy, we learned just a couple of days ago, Labor will be spending an additional $8.4 billion to pay for its pledges compared with the coalition. Was that decision to outspend the coalition really the best move to convince voters that you and Anthony Albanese can be trusted on the economy? Yeah, yes, because the decision that we took some time ago is that we would prioritise an economic dividend with our budgeting and not a political dividend. And the best way to get an economic di dividend is to end the rorts and waste and mismanagement, which has delivered nothing but a budget heaving with a trillion dollars in Liberal debt, and to replace that in qual with quality investments in areas like childcare and cleaner and cheaper energy and skills and training in universities. That's how we get the economy growing the right way, in an inclusive way. That's how we get real wages moving again. The defining challenges in our economy are inflation out of control, uh, real wages going backwards the worst they have for 22 years and not having enough to show for a trillion dollars in debt. And our economic plan and our budget strategy is all about starting to deal with those defining challenges. You know, no incoming Treasurer, if the government changes hands uh, tonight or in the next few days, uh, if the government does change hands, no incoming Treasurer would have been handed a trickier set of economic conditions than I would be because of that skyrocketing inflation and falling real wages and all the difficulties in the budget. We take those challenges seriously. That's why we've come up with a budget plan and an economic plan that is all about an economic dividend and not just playing politics as the government has for the best part of a decade. Jim Chalmers, how do you feel about the prospect of having to negotiate with independents to form a minority government, if that's the case? Do you think that Parliament would descend into chaos, as the Prime Minister has been warning today? 
Oh, we're, we're working our tails off to avoid that. You know, we want a majority Labor government under Anthony Albanese. That's the best way to secure a better future uh, for Australia and for its people. Uh, and we're not contemplating uh, any other outcome. We're working as hard as we can to get a majority Labor government. That's the only way that you can put an end uh, to Scott Morrison. It's the only way you can begin to build a better future together. Jim Chalmers, I'll let you go and try and get out of the rain as you um, do the last hour and a half or so of, of uh, hitting up the voters there in your own electorate. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us here on Sky News. Thanks for the chat, Ash. Appreciate it.